everyone, it's GT Time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. Happy Halloween! Daniel Bloodworth. Hey. In the super seat this week, Brad Ellis. Hi. And making this all happen, the very spooky Ian Hank. Hi. <laughs> oh, your shot is spooky, dude. <laughs> Spooky shot. That's yeah, pretty good. If you are uh, merely a listener, we have to explain this. We have like a, a murder, wa murderer like watching, spying on Ian shot. This should week. be, this should be heavy breathing. Stole the SDI converter box again. Well, we don't got to air out our dirty laundry, so we have to use camera four. <laughs> so it looks pretty cool. I can see myself from the side, which is weird. Yeah. You don't often get to do that. It's freaky. You have definitely yeah. feel like we're spying on you. I like it, uh, Brad. <laughs> since you are in the super seat this week. We have a whole new question for you. We've gone through the Power Rangers and the Ninja Turtles. We have a serious question this time. Brad, the aliens have invaded. One alien has gone rogue. It's holding a lightsaber and a Tron disc. It says, hey buddy, I'm here to help. Take one of my weapons. Which weapon do you take? Either way, I'm going to lose a limb with any of these weapons. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to take the lightsaber. Okay. Because I'll feel a little more comfortable with that. If I throw that Tron disc... That thing's coming back, I'm losing my hand. I'm not catching that. So, okay, sure, sure, sure. Because the thing is, you don't get a lot of time to train in this scenario. Yeah, you're like, and if you miss, that's it. It, it does come you're back. Done. No, it bounces around and comes I'm not back. gonna be able to catch that. Okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so you feel slightly safer with the lightsaber, yes. and that's why you picked it. Okay. That's yeah, it. You just have a pile of pixels in the floor. Is just, there not like yeah. a glove that grabs he did it or not something? He did not say glove. <laughs> no, 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 you don't get a glove. You, it does come back though. It works like it does in the movies. Uh, Oh my goodness. Okay, you know what? We're working through our problems Just today. Keep, keep going. We're doing a quick show, everybody. <laughs> also, the wide is like off kilter. I'll fix it. Okay, um, uh, you know, we got a, a short little window in which to make the show happen, and it's happening, and I feel good about that. And. You're doing corrections before the show's even over. We're doing corrections <laughs> now. Let's do it. Let's uh, begin correction music, please. <laughs> it's very loud. Uh, <laughs> Spartan 4s are canonically flashy. Uh, the full quote that Davis was trying to recall is, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That was Martin Luther King Jr. Killer whales are whales. The closing I music... I missed that. What? <laughs> okay. Oh, we just said that killer whales aren't whales, and in fact they are. Who said that? Uh, I think that was Davis. I don't killer want to throw under the... Killer whales? Play. Yes. Well, you know, there's always something like that, you know? You know that killer whales aren't whales. Uh, they are. Uh, Whale clips apparently are very important, too. Last week, the... The ending music of the show played a half hour early. Uh, awesome. To explain to everyone why that is, uh, the editing process of the show is largely a copy and paste process. Uh, and you know it. You know it's some probably probably what happened is uh, someone asked me on Twitter why that happened, and yeah. I said it was the mystery of the dance. Sure, it was the mystery I think of the what dance. really happened was it must have gotten ungrouped from the ending group. Yeah. And I moved it all to the end, but the music got ungrouped somehow. So pardon our dust. But wait, was the did the uh, I love Yoshi? Did that happen in I, the middle too? I think it played in the middle. I'm not sure how it actually, if that even popped up. Huh? Yeah, it's not the same without the music. Certainly. Who knows uh, what happened last week? <laughs> We're not entirely sure. <laughs> Xbox One. Uh, if you're playing 360 games on your Xbox One, you can go to the Xbox One menu by hitting the home button and the Xbox Three guide. Uh, if you hit the two start start and select buttons. Obviously, they're not named Start and Select. They're named something else now, but that's what they are. Uh, Lines and squares. You download those games. You put the disc in, and then it, uh, it just kind of verifies that you have that game. It downloads to your hard drive. You don't need the disc after which that. Is, which is like how they wanted it to be from the beginning, but everyone spazzed, right? It is 100% that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, that's what's so funny. Is like everyone's like, yeah, backwards compatibility. When at first they announced it, they were like, fuck you. No. Well, there was a lot more to it than that because there were going to be online checks every 24 hours. And well, like yeah, that. that's silly. Uh, Toka is the turtle. Razor is the dog beast. Uh, the Payday 2 skins are only for weapons. They're not for your body. Uh, but you can get some skins for DLC weapons you don't own, which is very funny. Uh, in fact, uh, Dota 2 and CSGO, they both have similar chest for free, pay for the key microtransactions, though they do not include gameplay buffs. Those things in the chests are always cosmetic. Uh... The Vita lawsuit was specifically about remote play with PS3 games. Remote play works for, th for all PS4 games and do not require a special peripheral. End correction music. That was a lot of corrections. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Um, I do have some more corrections. 
But these are like comments. Okay, oh, I guess we can keep, <laughs> keep it going. Uh, Ian, these are these are both in response to how you called all money people evil. Uh, <laughs> I was is, waiting for this. This is from Egmond. Uh, not all money people are evil. Some of us are just trying to learn the, the game that is corporate life so we can use our skills for good. Corporate man. And the whale joke says, Ian, I work in corporate video at a large accounting firm, and I couldn't be happier with the people I've met and worked with. Like anywhere, there are some jerks, but the cool people far outweigh the buttholes. This is a business whose sole purpose is to make money, but they figured out a way to do that without being soulless monsters. Mm -hmm. Just giving you some hope for the rest of the world outside of GT. No, you all got it. I you missed had it. You had, had such it. a good out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, what's the thing? I, I met... Yeah, one of my best friends in the world I met working that job. He was another video guy. And I was in a band for years with a guy who was a trader. So, like, obviously, blanket statement yeah. is not everybody. I mean, there are some worthless piles of money garbage that work here. Uh, but, like... <laughs> in this room. Not in this room, actually. <laughs> no. Because uh, none of us have a lot of money. But, uh, yeah, it's not across the board. Okay. Obviously. We're cool with money people. Uh, I do have one more clarification. This is our weekly Destiny clarification. Something interesting happened in Destiny this week. Uh, for ha Okay, we'll start that again. Uh, for Halloween, the Eververse store got its first consumable items this week. Yeah. Halloween candy and Halloween masks. The masks are temporary until you add glue to them, and then they become legendary and permanent. Uh, the candy provides various temporary buffs, uh, things that would increase glimmer for specific enemy types or increase experience points for specific types of weapons. You can earn these items in-game, but you can also buy packs of them outright with silver. GT Time would now like to formally apologize for complaining about a potential situation that didn't come to fruition for two whole weeks. Gosh, we really jumped the gun. <laughs> And corrections music. Oh wow. my. Wow. Heavy. <laughs> hey, so smug. Heavy. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Uh, just go tweak the mouse on that computer over there. We're just going to have to do that the whole show, though. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. That's why they pay him the big bucks. Okay. Um, uh -oh. Game trailers. We're moving ahead. It's like somebody did something to our laptop. Yeah, everything's um, going to hell. So uh, that was it. Yeah, basically... The consumables were added two weeks after, like, oh my god. And we got so much just like, hey, hold on, gear guys. Even from Matt Blair, like, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. No, it happened. You got them. You got those gotcha. consum consumables that include buffs. They're in the game. Gotcha, Matt Blair. <laughs> the, uh... The candy thing is a cute idea. It's, it's a just, little weird, though, that when you wear a mask, it takes your light level, your armor away. I, it'd be nice if it went on top of your helmet. So wait, are you wearing masks right now in Destiny? Sometimes you have to wear a mask to like do a quest or whatever. One of them was trip off the tower, which is really funny. Also, that camera seems to be moving. Yeah, you're oh. like sinking. Yeah. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty funny, except yeah, you take your helmet off and you're just wearing paper. So like my light level drops from like 296 to 260 or whatever. I'm gonna get creamed out there by the big bads. Wait, so the mask is just for fun, isn't it? It's for funsies and for some missions. Wait, what is it, what happens with the missions with the masks? It's like get 30 kills while wearing the cryptarch mask or uh, find this thing while being a tiger. So Ian, and what you have to get that camera is sliding back in real masks. time right now. I know, I love it. Ian, what if I told that the camera's gone? <laughs> what if I told you? That, <laughs> what if I told you you can spend silver to buy a random pack and then get random masks inside the of those thing, packs? The weird thing is that in the description of the mask, it just says skull mask. Mm-hmm. So I don't know uh, if <laughs> it's like the Titanic. This is so sad. <laughs> it's been an honor playing with you boys. Um, so I don't know if it's just the skull mask or if it's other masks. Who okay. knows? That is, uh, yeah. Well, there it is. Um, <laughs> basically, it's the candy. It's the candy that gives you buffs. And we talked about how consumables were coming. You could spend money. That on candy them. looks gross, though. It's like grandma candy. Yeah, it is. Like it's grandma like those candy. weird gummies. Like butterscotch. That you're like, what is this? The yeah. problem is, like, I don't want to complain about it too much because it is fun Halloween stuff. That's the thing. It's like Destiny just having a good time. Yeah, I just imagine some guy gluing a mask to his face. In real life. Yeah, the, the way it's worded, yeah. <laughs> no, you add glue to the mask when it's off your face, and then you put it back on. See? That's not at all what you just said. So <laughs> let's talk about... No, no. You said gluing a mask to... All right. Well, let's talk about what actually happened this week. 
So wait a minute, are the masks gonna go away if I don't put gold on them? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I can't even see you. That's crazy. The I want to keep my masks. I got a tiger. Got a, you, Ian, if you want some glue, you can spend uh -huh. silver on packs that may include well, glue. Well, I got some glue. I got a drop. Okay. I got a drop of some random glue. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll do it. It was great. So that mask can last forever, only if you put that glue good, on it. Good, good. So let's talk about Paris Games Week. Uh, has anyone at the, in this panel ever heard of Paris Games Week before? Um, not before Sony announced the conference, no. Yeah, no. Brandon, had you? In passing, yeah. Yeah, isn't heard, that crazy? I heard it referred to before. So I now, knew there was something in Paris. I didn't know. If you were to ask me what it was called, I probably couldn't have told you. Yeah. So, I mean, now we know. Now it's a thing. It's actually a very popular show. It's been around for five years. Uh, Sony had a press conference there this week and announced several games. And so I want to talk through each of these games. I want to get your opinions on them. There's a lot of games. So we're going to have to kind of rapid fire through them. Is, that, is it the only gaming event named after the city it's in? Classic Tokyo Game Tokyo Show? Yeah, Tokyo Game Show. Okay, I'm just saying it's classic smug French. No, no, no. That's not like a <laughs> smug Japanese now. <laughs> Nobody's being smug here. <laughs> well, just Lo Los Angeles Games Weekend would be a funny name for E3. Ooh, that'd be nice. <laughs> I would really love Los Angeles Games Weekend. I mean, weekend. yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different expos that are named after the places they're in. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport is probably the biggest game announcement we saw this week. Gran Turismo Sport is a, I would call it a semi-sequel. This is not official, but it's kind of apparent that it is. It's not Gran Turismo 7. It's like a platform, right? Like a racing platform kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, to explain it, I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, there are basically two ways to play it. One is you're, you're sponsoring or you're representing your country, and the other is you're representing your favorite car manufacturer. And basically, like it's kind of like Drive Club, except those are your clubs. You're the United States or hmm. you're or Ford. Sounds cool. In theory. Yeah, I think it's I think it's what it is. It's, I think I think it's a new prologue. It's basically yeah. in, like GT prologue was. Uh, Blood is is a reason to be excited about this game. Um, well, yeah, I mean it's first Gran Turismo on PS4, so it's going to be you know very interesting to see how how it advances and all of that, and really you know put that that mark on the system. But do you do you think it would make a greater mark if they just waited for the sequel? Um, we'll have to see more of what sport actually is all about. You know, I mean if. You know, if it's more akin to, you know, just a uh, prologue or something, or, you know, then probably not. But, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say how much they're going to expand on it. Uh, what we do know is that we're going to see this in early 2016 in a beta form. How crazy is that? It's pretty good. Well, I mean, what's crazy about that? What's crazy about that is crazy. That, is, that, is, that is extremely soon for a game that didn't exist before this week. Well, that because it's it's a smaller game. That's why we're getting that. But know, they've that had early. the they've had the GT uh, Academy demos and stuff. They did that for Gran Turismo Six, and um, they had the GT HD thing before Prologue came out on PS3. So I mean, Ooh, I forgot about that weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Sport is probably going to be more significant than either of those. You think so? Why, why, what evidence do you have to think it's more significant than those? Um, it just, it just strikes me as, you know, they actually have like a career to it. Yeah. So. I don't know, man. It might just be like bare bones multiplayer. Hmm. They didn't talk too much about the progression of the game. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's like they talked for a long time about it during the press conference. Yeah, can we talk about how weird that was, kind of? Like sure. What was talk? weird about that? Like him, like standing like this when they're talking. Like no one seemed, like amped up to be there. Sure. Like they're just kind of. It was like the weirdest, awkwardest thing I've ever seen. You've seen plenty of weird, I've seen awkward plenty things, of awkward, Brad. Like, but and this is this takes. Like the it cake? wasn't funny, awkward. I was just like, uh. I don't know, man. There's always Konami press conference, so. Yeah, but that, at least that's funny. That's funny, awkward. This was in the middle of a press conference, kind of like announcing the biggest game. Gran Turismo's back. This is our Their biggest franchise. Our biggest. There was franchise. Suit Guy in Tokyo. Sorry. Suit Guy. What, which was suit guy? The guy that had to keep his suit closed. Oh, okay. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was great. Uh, but yeah, the, the announcement of Gran Turismo Sport, to me, doesn't feel like a huge impact. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, it's weird. I don't remember one shot from the trailer. Brandon, do you? Uh, it was just cars. I mean, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. I, remember, I think there was that shot where the car came around the corner and... <laughs> Driving towards the camera in slow mo, and you know, then there the, were a bunch of quick cuts. Maybe it might have been a lens flare in there. I think. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, then it rained for a second. Actually, so I guess the one part I do remember is the shot of the flags. You know what I mean? It says "Represent your country," and you see the flags go by, and I'm like, that might leave an impact. You know what I mean? The idea of like, hey, Italy has the best Gran Turismo racers in the world. That might be something cool. Well, to, you better believe there's some people in Italy that are going to want to have the best mm -hmm. Gran Turismo players in yeah, the world. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, especially if um, if you're going to announce this, uh, if 
that divisiveness of that country representation is set up in the demo in whatever we're going to be playing at the beginning of 2016. If that's like geared towards that, then that's really smart. I yeah. think uh, then that's a reason to get involved with the beta, even though your 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 uh, you know information is not going to carry over to the actual game. You're just like, oh, I want to get involved to see if I, we can win this, to see if the U.S. can can you know can chart. How is the U.S. going to do in something like this? We're not going to win. <laughs> well, we, um, I know we're not going to win, but yeah, I don't know. Can we're, we, can we, we have compete. The thing is, we have got too many can scrubs bronze? bringing down the average. Yeah. Yikes! I probably shouldn't play that. <laughs> U.S., we can do this. Get good at Gran Turismo. Uh, let's talk about Robinson the Journey, another game that was just announced. This is a Crytek game. Uh, first to PlayStation 4 because of PlayStation VR. This is a VR game. Uh, we saw very little of it. Brandon, what's your impression of Robinson the Journey? Uh, is this the dinosaur game? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> it. The thing is, it's not a dinosaur game, but it is the dinosaur game for yeah. now. Um, well, how, well, how do we know it's not a dinosaur game? Did they say you're going to be going to, to different, different locations? Locations and places uh, and stuff? Locations. I, not necessarily, but that we're going on a grand journey. You know what I mean? The, right, so we don't know. I mean, it, it could just be a dinosaur game. I w I'm willing to make a side bet that there is more to this game than dinosaurs. Yeah, I'm not gonna make a I'm not gonna make yeah. a bet because that would involve me actually like caring what where the, like ends up. By sure. The way. No, no. Okay. Um, so hold on. Why don't you care? When, when Crytek announces an exc uh, timed exclusive game for PlayStation 4 that's VR. That's VR that we haven't. No one's demoed yet. It's mm -hmm. like well, that's gonna. We're not gonna play that for a long, long time. That's that's. That's something that, uh, um, yeah, at this point, I'm just not, I'm not going to be excited until VR, until VR comes in the mail. Then it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. now when you actually sure. announce something, I can anticipate it or kind of gauge like when I'm going to get it or what the experience is going to be like. But um, that, yeah, the way that that was sold, just kind of set up. You're like, you're, you're like, imagine if you're in a forest and there's dinosaurs. It's just like, I've done that enough in video games to not really need to actually be physically there. Like, to not really see, like, the advantage of that. I was getting really bad King Kong vibes. Remember, like, Jackson's King Kong when they were, like, running through the canyon and all the dinosaurs were just, like, narrowly missing everyone with every single step they took? And you're like, okay, whatever. It was a little like that, yeah. So that's what we saw is just somebody dodging dinosaurs and a little robot Wheatley telling them where to go. Uh, let's cushion this with the other uh, VR games that were announced. Battle Zone. Is that the tank one? That's yeah. the tank one from Rebellion. Yeah, it's, a, it's apparently an Atari game. Looks that, cool. That's it. That's, does, no, describe yeah. it better. Describe it to someone who's never heard of Battle Zone before. What is that game, Brad? That's literally what you just said. It looks like an Atari game in the modern era. It looks like a, an Atari like, game, like, like in the Atari style. Mm -hmm. Like it was clearly influenced by that. Well, yeah, it looks more like kind of I'd say similar to like the Tron movie back sure. in the day. You know, it's just very. You know, like it's 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 3D, but it's just very flat textures and that kind of thing. Yeah, and everything's glowing. Yeah, and you're in tanks. Could you're, be fun. You're VR and in tanks, but again, we could just kind of saw tanks outside. We didn't see anything close to what mm -hmm. what's going to be like for us. I think inside the tanks. I had a really weird impulse when I saw this. Okay. I thought we were watching like the drones that bigger players would use. Like when I saw the first shot of gameplay, I was like, oh, these are like little things that someone sent out. And then any second now, we're going to see some big soldier come running through, and these are going to be his little things. And it took me like 10 seconds to be like, oh, that this is it. This is, that's all this game is. It's, it's just, just those little a, things. Just some little things. <laughs> yeah, it looks so tiny I, to me. I don't know. Like, I don't think that there's the going to be like a first person. I mean, maybe there'll be some, some of that, but I think it will be more of a, the, the way you saw it will probably be how it hmm. plays. Oh, that'd be interesting. I mean, sometimes just the little things is good. We'll see. Uh, and again, it's just because of VR. Uh, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. This is a game that doesn't seem to have much to do with Until Dawn. You are That's uh, weird, yeah. you're in a minecart and scary things happen around you as you wear your VR headset. Do you think they just That's slapped Until Dawn on that cuz like successful? Sure. No, I think Supermassive is making it. Uh, so I think it's that studio. Hmm. I Maybe, think that Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, I haven't watched this uh, trailer, but um, just this popped in my mind like so Until Dawn was like a fun B movie, right? And yeah. then Maybe they were just like, we need something fun for VR. Why don't we just have the people who made the fun B movie make a fun carnival ride, like a haunted house ride? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the, do that. The logo itself even kind of indicates that it's meant to be like a haunted carnival ride, and yeah. I think that's it. It's, it's nothing complicated with the Until Dawn sure, yeah. tie-in. It's not necessary for sure, but it is what it is. And again, I guess uh, that's let us play. It's it. hard to like, yeah, judge any of these games. You have to play them to get a feel from. You can't just show yeah. us like in what they showed in the press conference is like off-screen footage. A lot of it, so we didn't even really get that good of a look on it. Yeah, right. yeah. I will say, like, as good as Crytek looks, um, it's probably not going to run at that resolution. I mean, that's the one thing that, especially with the PlayStation VR, like, you can definitely, you know, when you first put the thing on, you you 
since that resolution dropped. You know, everything looks a little bit more grainy and jagged. Mm. Because you need to hit that frame rate. That yeah. becomes way more important when you're yeah. in VR, correct? And it, be, and it becomes, you know, something that, like, you just get used to and accept after you've been playing it for a bit. But it is, like, <laughs> your first impression is like, oh, okay, this looks dusty a little bit. No, that's, that's interesting, Blood, because that is a concern I have personally about PlayStation VR is if is the PlayStation 4 strong enough to give us good looking VR? Yeah. And I think like Battle Tanks it can handle. Yeah, I'm okay <laughs> with Battle I hope Tanks. So. Yeah. And so like the more demanding games, like you said, like like uh, Robinson, it, I am concerned about that. But that doesn't mean that they can't have like complex rendering and all that stuff. It's just like the actual like lines of resolution aren't aren't as crisp as what you're used to. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's just oh, it's something we'll have to just experience. Unfortunately, we'll get there. We'll get there, everybody. Let's stop talking about VR. How about Matterfall? It's a game from Housemark. Uh, had a big budget CG trailer for mm -hmm. the kind of things that Mark, Housemark traditionally does. Brad, what are you? Why are you so? I'm wondering if this is gonna be like a bigger budget game than what they usually do. That'd be interesting because they've done so well because of their history. Sony's like, hey, how about a little more money? Yeah, like they've been making like small arcade kind of games. Like Resogun and Dead Nation, yeah. which are cool games. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're just getting a bigger shot now. Sure. Which I would like to see them do, because they're making Alienation. Alienation. Yeah. Yep. So I wonder if this is their step into triple A territory. Or do you so believe in House Mark? Can they pull it yeah, off? Yeah, I do. Okay. Everything I've played by them, I like. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's on point, they're basically. They're just solid. Yeah. That whole way that it looked, though, I mean, it was very Resogun. The way things just shattered and, you know, sure, yeah, the particles everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, I love those particles. Man, when Resogun first showed up in the office, I only I was just looking forward to the end of a level, when everything blows up. up. Yeah. yeah, freaking love that. And I was like, oh, cool, next gen. And that was <laughs> that was it, man. Uh, uh, Detroit Become Human was announced this week. Uh, this is Quantic Dreams' new game. It sounds like just horrible, broken English when you say it. It's like a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Did you Detroit, hear Detroit Become Human? Detroit Become, become Human. Detroit Become Didn't Human. Uh, this is, yeah, I mean, it's a Quantic Dream game. Uh, many people might remember the Kara, uh, Kara, I guess we have it. Mm -hmm. It's like Lara Croft, it's Kara. Kara Roth. Kara. Uh, so uh, Kara is uh, an android getting built together, and she's like, hey, stop it. And then like that was the, what that old demo was about. That was a PS3 demo. <laughs> hey, stop it. I want to be live, stop it. Um, and so they, they're making a whole game based off of that tech demo. Uh, it was funny, when you first announced this, he's just like, 27 million people watched that tech demo. It's like, okay, man. Yeah, calm down. Well, it's also okay. been online for like five years. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's what happens when you... <laughs> uh, yeah, and so this is a game that takes place in Detroit. You are an android uh, who wakes up and uh, decides to live the life of a human, to it, become human. It looks exactly the, the plot of the show Humans. What oh, is the show funny. Humans? <laughs> like, it's, it's that. It's androids, and some of them are sentient. And uh, this family buys one, and they're like, "Is she, is she sapient or not?" And then you know she is, and it's like, it's like literally this. They they're like respect us, and there are some that are just like looking at the the ones that are sentient, and they're like, "Why why don't why aren't you like me?" That's so sad. And like, then they're like, "We have stuff. Maybe we can share this." It's like literally looks exactly the same. Mm. Yeah, I mean it, it's. It's what sci-fi has been telling for maybe 50 years, is this idea of, like, mm -hmm. hey, if AI gets a little too smart, like, how do we handle that? I mean, this, like, looks, like, even, like, visually pretty similar. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, like, it it's is... It's a little more future -y, but... I would say, though, that's a fair criticism. I, I think that the game's subject alone isn't that unique. And right. sure. It's, yeah. So it's kind of going to have to fall onto the game to present something unique. What it did present unique, I think, is, like, Detroit... It's kind of fun that to was see a that. Weird pick, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a cool, an interesting pick because when you hear Detroit, you're like, oh, is it going to be some bombed out hellscape? And then they're like, Detroit was the site of the big renaissance in tech. And I'm like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Some, some wishful thinking. I pointed out earlier, though, that Deus Ex Human Revolution had that same <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. already been to Detroit Blah, in the future. The We've Detroit. already been there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was cool. I was just talking to Brandon earlier today about the title. And how I got it, I got oh, it. Yeah. It's coming. We got a little delay. If the title was "Become Human," 
we would say F you game, like go die. Uh, but that it's Detroit become human, it's at least a little bit interesting. It, it should still just be Detroit, though. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Al I'll always vote for that, but like, yeah, sadly. Get the hell out of here, David Cage. With your, <laughs> with your subtitles. Become because human. He, he actually didn't say become human on stage. Mm -hmm. He said, now we're going to show you our I new game. It is yeah. called Detroit. And he walked off stage. And I was like, wow, Detroit's a cool name. Oh, wait, no, it's not. But you think about when I mean, you talk about like compa comparing it to Deus Ex, comparing it to humans. I think that's what, like one of the big things that disappointed me about the reveal is that you look back at Beyond Two Souls, and I know that game, you know, to most ended up being a disaster. But like, imagine if when he was selling Beyond Two Souls, he was like, "So it's got Ellen Page in it, and she has telekinetic powers." You're like, "And?" And he's like, "That's it." No. And she's going I, out into the world. Wait, wait, wait. Willem Dafoe. Right. <laughs> like, and Willem, and Willem Dafoe's like the mean, you know, professor guy who's like trying to hunt her down and she's going against him. Like, yeah. I would have zero interest in that game. But like, I was a little curious about that game because she actually gets her powers through this like ghost character that like has been with her since like her childhood. And so I'm like, oh, there we go. That's the thing. That's what makes it not the X-Men or, you know, heroes or, you know, like anything else that deals with like, I have powers. Everyone's rejecting me. What do I do? And like revisiting these themes. And uh, Detroit is lacking that for me right now. It's like, it okay, thing, is what you discovered saying. you're a robot, you're going out into the world. There's no hook. Then what? what? What else are you going to do to differentiate yourself? But it's, yourself? it's David Cage, so there'll be something completely ridiculous about, you know, 50 oh, yeah. For once, I kind of want the ridiculousness, I guess. <laughs> She'll I guess fall in love with a human. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's and then, gonna like, be... the moths attack. Yeah, yeah the moths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, mo the robo-moths. Plus, there's going to be at least one shower sequence. Mm -hmm. You know there is. Oh, yeah. Androids don't need showers, do they? Nope. This one this does. One does. She's she wants, human. Yeah. She's a David Cage android. She's standing she doesn't get rained on. The yeah. shower moment is the moment she becomes human. <laughs> yes. Uh, Drive Club Bikes. This is a game that was announced and released in the very same day of the press conference. Kind of it leaked ahead of time. It's Kyle Bossman's favorite. Yeah, this is my favorite. Uh, this is a $20 standalone game, meaning if you didn't buy Drive Club, you can go play it for $20. Oh, if you already have cool. Drive Club, you can pay it You can play it for $15. Drive Club bikes. Like motorcycles or bicycles? Yeah. I wish bicycles. It would have been yeah. bicycles. <laughs> I'm like, uh, lost interest. Uh, what's funny is we, we did the live awesome. stream. We, we did a live response, uh, and I asked chat, like, is this a big deal? And a lot of people said, yes, that Kyle, this is a big deal. People like bikes. This mm -hmm. is like racing enthusiasts for motorcycles exist. Do we feel that? Um, I mean, it, it doesn't feel like a huge deal to me. It just feels, you know, especially in a weird way, it's almost a backfire of how well they've been supporting Drive Club because that game has, like, consistently been changing and updating and putting new things into the game. So it's like, oh, bikes, okay, that's the next thing you're adding to Drive Club, even though, you know, it is a more substantial thing. There's, like, 42-something bikes in there, I guess, and then you can drive them on all the, you know, courses that already exist. Yeah, but all those courses already exist. It doesn't, to me, feel like we're actually getting a new game, and I think that's why it doesn't feel like yeah. a... To oh, me, I mean, it has its own campaign and stuff. Yeah. To me, it seems like, yeah, because at first I was like, why would they not just put that in the game? But it seems like it's because not enough people bought the game, and they're trying to get more people I think in. the game sold well, actually. Drive Club? Really? Yeah, I think it did. I think it did pretty I well. It crashed, tanked. Like, I don't know. critically, yeah. I well, think it, it, it had well. a rough launch. Yeah, because of all that yeah. hullabaloo. I'm not sure we can get numbers on this. I was going to say, Ian, look it up, but I don't think they've ever published numbers on how Drive Club is sold. Yeah. And we're certainly not using VG charts. Word of mouth has had it, you know, doing mm -hmm. better over time. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has a pretty gnarly fan base, too, like diehard fan base. Yeah, what I've think, heard. Right, exactly, yeah. And, you know, it's it's a looker. Yeah. It's certainly a looker. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I mean... I think up? they handled it really well. I think it was the right thing to give out, or not give out, but to have available that day. You're right because it is a low hype thing. Yeah. So why and, not release it on that day? And it and it's it's better than more cars. You know, it's better than just kind of like, oh, here's this other thing that's similar to what we've been doing. It's like this will potentially shake things up. Can you can bikes ride with cars? Uh, I don't think so. That's crazy, but Brian. I don't know. No, why wouldn't bikes ride with cars? That'd be fun. It'd be fun. Yeah. What is this Mario Kart? You can do it in Burnout, I think. Burnout Paradise. It's like snowboarding right. right. and skiers. You just you just don't mix. SSX yeah. did. But that's the thing. It's that ain't right. I mean, yeah, that, that is the thing. If you were actually doing it with people online, they would just run you over. So Sounds like fun. Because they kind of yeah. do yeah. it. They, they would kind of do all right. Check. <laughs> uh, run over bikes. The last game that was announced is Avicii Vector. Avicii mm. slash Vector. This Audio is a, surf. Mm. Uh, a wildly popular DJ nope, uh, nope. music game. And mm. Brandon's saying nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so, uh, Brandon, 
let's say that I'm I'm so I'm a listener who's never heard of a Vici vector right now. That's, I've never heard of Vici. That's me. That's so it. how would, how do you explain to this person why it's nope nope nope? What is this game? Um, well, it's a uh, he's a popular DJ that they um, wanted him to because it makes sense. It's like if you got to do a music game, you're like oh we got to bring in so many different bands and stuff like that. It's like oh what if we just get one guy? Yeah, and that guy is the only person that supplies music for it, um, and. It looks like just kind of like a weird triangle track based. I don't know if all of the tracks are going to be three sided or if it's just that one and there's going to be um, hmm. different ones. Kind of remind me of Amplitude in a little way, how like you're going through mm-hmm. a tunnel. Um, but uh, it just didn't didn't really grab me. Didn't really seem. Uh, um, I, I couldn't get the skill out of it, and it, and, and it seemed very early on. It seemed kind of like he came in with the music and the style, and then the developers were like, uh, "Where's the game here? Uh, okay." It's Maybe definitely do this. one of those games where you are behind a thing that mm. is traveling down a tube and there's music playing. I mean, there's a lot of games like that. Yeah. Audio I, played, yeah. I, I played one that was sort of like that not too long ago. I can't remember the name, though. That Scarab one? Thumper? Thumper. Not Thumper, but oh. that's Thumper. cool. Thumper. Awesome. There's another one, yeah. yeah. And the music is cool once it gets going. But see, yeah, thump- but it's not Thumper. a Vici. Thumper, uh, the Thumper is first Thumper and foremost is the game. Bulldog. No, the one I played was very. Yeah, it felt very much like kind game. of like F Zero in a way. Like you were, it was sort of like a, huh. a little bit more racing looking. It's a genre that is still alive and thriving mm-hmm. despite all the others that have died. Very interesting. Uh, let's move on to a little bowl of assorted announcements. Uh, these are things that uh, weren't necessarily game announcements, but uh, or I mean new game announcements, but still news that came out of this press conference out of this week. Uh, Tekken Seven is coming to consoles. Mm-hmm. There will be exclusive content on PlayStation 4. No more details than that. They were running that logo dry. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there will also be VR compatibility with Tekken 7, which to me is the most interesting part of all yeah, of that. Yeah, really interesting. How are they going to do that? Yeah, it's, what? It's like it's spectating? Not that, or? Yeah, yeah, it's not that interesting. They're just, you're oh. just going to see them like they're on a table. Not like they're on a table, like they're human beings in front of you, Bloodworth, to scale. You get to watch these two people in front of you fighting. I'll check it out. Future. He'd, he'd rather have bikes. I mean, I, I no. I mean, I honestly <laughs> feel like it's 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 just gonna be you know it's gonna be like you're in a 3D space with the game that you already know. For so. for listeners, uh, with my enthusiasm uh, that I just uh, tried to get into Bloodworth, I was met with the coldest shrug, <laughs> may, perhaps in the history of GT time. Wait, don't they call this truck? Don't they have good like story modes in those games? Tekken, Tekken, not really. Uh, I mean, you get where cool, people are into it. right? You get cool stuff at the end. You know what the I mean? The old cutscenes were. Yeah, hilarious. what if like you're doing those. VR with like some single player stuff? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to think what else they could do besides that. No, think of this. Think of it. It's Evo right now. Okay, I put on my VR headset and I'm watching the two best Tekken fighters in the world fight in front of me as if they're two human beings in front of me. I'm in, I'm a spectator of this match. You're there. You're in the crowd. Nothing yeah, blood. You're one of the people nothing? in the background going. <laughs> yeah. Cool. How cool would that be, blood? We'll see. Blood doesn't care about VR. <laughs> no, I do. I actually very excited. I'm the about one who doesn't care about VR. Yeah, Brandon, none of that excites you as well. I think that's interesting. I it, it nothing gimmicky excites me about VR. Nothing that's just like, hey, we're making this game, and then uh, yeah, we'll do that too. Oh, and to me, like, that's not a. That's like a. Oh, <laughs> it's like a reason to buy VR. That is so exciting to me. Potentially. That'd be cool. All maybe right. maybe I supported the Connect for just too long and then just finally was like, oh, all right, yeah, I'm fine. Sure. I'm done. I'm, I'm out. I get what you're saying. So I, apolo- I apologize for supporting this nonsense. It's a mistake. I'm done. It's hard to believe in technology. I guess, that yeah, I guess with me, like something like a fighting game, it just, to me, it's something you're going to be in a room with a bunch of buddies and it's like, so why would, you know, like VR, I don't know. It just, it just feels like a clash of. Cultures. Yeah, because it's it, it would just be you. Like you wouldn't do that with friends. You wouldn't be like, all right, oh, yeah. I'm gonna leave the entire social circle right now and just encase myself in this thing. It's sort of a theme this week. Uh, the future is not for friends. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about No Man's Sky. Got a release date this week, June 2016. Boo. Yeah, that is kind of a boo. That's the middle of That's, E3, probably. Well, and also it's just like, oh no, oh, God, oh, like oh. those poor people who <laughs> thought it was gonna be released. Yeah, yeah. right. Then. But also like, I mean, yes, it's a small team. They've been working on it. This game's incredible. Yeah, but like, oh man, I don't know. I think it's just an it's an unfortunate conflagration of uh, conflagration of there it is. hype and reality because yeah, like everyone was like they're gonna drop it or get a release date this year. And then it was like, oh, nope, a straight year from now. Everyone should have learned. Have fun. From Last Guardian in yeah. Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. But here's the difference is like, 
The last game this team made is Joe Danger 2. Joe Danger, right. Which is so weird. And it's... I downloaded it to support them. It's not a very good game. <laughs> Joe Danger oh, no. 1 was kind Joe, of fun. I actually prefer Joe Danger 1. Joe Danger yeah. 2 went in a lot of weird ways where it shouldn't have. Anyway, this that team is making No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. So, like, we got to, like, keep that in mind when we're thinking of, like, how long this game is taking. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's probably going to take. I, I bet it's going to get delayed. I bet it's not even coming out in June I 2016. I wouldn't be surprised. Either. I would be much happier if it came out in July. Okay, at least a month. <laughs> Hello, games. Uh, Street Fighter V is coming. This one's actually bumped up February February, February 16th. Yes. <laughs> Got to hit that R. Six characters will be released over the course of the first year of this game's release. We were taunted with, with silhouettes. Yeah, with yeah. like little I mean, symbols and like DLC eyeballs on them. characters? Kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're not for free unless you haven't earned enough fight money to buy them. Mm -hmm. Here's the way that game's working. But six in addition to the, the ones that we already know Correct. about. Correct. Yes. Oh, okay. There's 16 yeah, yeah. characters in the game. Uh, so I guess the question I want to ask the panel is, is that okay? Is that good? I like that you can earn it just all in game. Hmm. That's really cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, what's wrong with it? Because I don't feel like anything's wrong with it, but it, like, it feels like something that should trigger me off. Do you know what I mean? It feels like it's, something. It feels similar to, to what Killer Instinct to me. Yeah. And that is how Killer Instinct works, right? Well, yeah, Killer it Instinct like didn't have way it, more. Yeah, it's mo this. you're getting more out of the box than you. Were there like five Killer characters in Killer Instinct or something? Stupid? Can you? I don't think you can earn the characters with in-game currency in Killer Instinct. Probably not. Yeah, so I mean that's like probably the yeah. defining difference. I guess the but even bigger difference is that Street Fighter uh, costs sixty dollars up front, whereas yep. Killer Instinct. Well, I guess you can spend that on Killer Instinct. It's, oh God. I think Street Fighter Five is a value. It's like every other fighting game nowadays, though. But you can at least earn it with in-game stuff. Yeah. So I don't think you can with Mortal Kombat, right? Like Jason and Predator. Oh no, you cannot earn them with nah. in-game yeah. stuff. That would please. Also, Dalsim looks rad. Earn. Oh gore. yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. That's a good takeaway too. Dalsim was announced as a new character, yeah, I don't think so. and he does indeed look rad. Uh, describe his look to listeners, Brandon. Uh, he's got a big beard now. Mm -hmm. um, what? Yeah. I like that yeah. he looks older. Yeah. Yeah, all the characters are just like a little bit, a little bit more mature. I appreciate um, that. Thanks for letting the characters grow old. Also, with old. any hair, is it kind of weird. He's got a turban. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When did he, could, when yeah. he just catch on fire? No, he's, um, he's, no, yeah, he's, he's too got, pro. He's an that. expert. He's, he's got lots pro. of great fire stuff. He's got this really great fire arc. Mm -hmm. It's just like I just love the idea and the just really f fast, frantic fighting game to just kind of like spit a little piece of fire. Out. I, just don't, just like, I don't oh, see how that beard just doesn't burn off in the first match, but okay. He's got oh, it. you actually, we're we getting it. into Street yeah. Fighter physics here? Yeah. <laughs> he's got it groomed away from his mouth. And he waxes He can literally it. curly yeah. cue his body up and we're like yeah. squabbling well, over yeah. fire. So when did it become Dull Sim and not Dull Seam? Oh, I might be. No, I think it's Dull Sim. That, I mean, no, Bossman and I were talking about this the other day. He was saying Dull Sim. I was like, wasn't it Dull Seam? I mean, it, it wasn't be. long enough. It wasn't that long ago that I was calling him Ryu still. You know what I mean? <sighs> When like, it's really... <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so Battleborn Beta is going to be first on PlayStation 4. Mm. Huge announcement. This is the next game from 2K Games. Also, right. Gearbox. Yeah. Pass. What was the announcement? Like what is crazy to me that the beta is going to be first on PlayStation 4 sometime this year? Uh, what is crazy to me is that I think this should be a big deal. This mm. is kind of what I want to talk about, is that, like, Borderlands sells like crazy. Mm -hmm. Borderlands 2 did monster like sales. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like the successor to that. It's like a lot of the same team, a lot of the same humor, the same publisher, same developer. Why doesn't Battleborn feel like a big deal? Uh, I mean, kind of to be honest, I feel like the stigma against Battleborn are from the people that don't like Borderlands. So that's kind of a weird question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that people that are uh, Borderlands fans are actually probably are looking forward to Battleborn to a degree. Not as much as they would a Borderlands sequel, of course, but they're probably curious. I just, I'm not feeling that blood because there are a lot of people who bought Borderlands 2. Mm -hmm. And there are not a lot of people who are clamoring for the beta of this. And I, the shooter market, I, I know it's just like redundant to say there's like so many shooters out there. The shooter market is on fire this year. Like every yeah. shooter coming out this year is really good. You know, and like a, we, we don't have Black Ops 3 yet. We don't have Battlefront yet. You know, like it's a we year just where got Halo 5. We're just kind of, you know, getting used to those modes. Rainbow They're Six all, is going to get buried. Yeah, Siege. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is Siege yeah. Still, wait, Siege, it's coming. Siege got bumped, right? Or did oh, it got bumped to February. You're right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's safe. Yeah, I think kind goodness, of. I mean, for still, this dude. year. Yeah. Um, that was really smart for them. You yeah. Know, just like, oh, we're backing out of that. Now it looks really smart. Um, You're absolutely right. But, uh, I mean, they're all 
you know, fantastic. So uh, I, I think it's not only just Overwatch, you know, having their beta beforehand. Um, I, I still think one of the biggest faults of that game, I just recently I finally got to play it competitively. And I was dying every time I picked up uh, Battleborn. I was like, okay. And I think that's why, like, you know, like, PAX came and went. It's like, nobody really talked about Battleborn. And, like, you know, Comic-Con came and went. And it was just because, like, we, I played it again. And I played this single-player mode that wasn't that tough with characters that, like, are kind of fun. But aren't, I'm not really getting to showcase my ability because I'm not like, getting, like, that crucial headshot. Or, like, oh, I didn't just save that, that other player's life with this ability. I'm just kind of like, oh, mobs. Oh, I died. Okay, I'll respawn. I come back. Um, and I think that was Battleborn for a long time, and like it's just kind of finally building up momentum and becoming an actual game, and it's just it's too late. You know, it's like there's just so many other shooters that have so many other you know significant reasons to be yeah. to get people excited. I think I think with Battleborn, like it was a weird way they announced it. They announced it with, I want to say like an, the attitude of the game feels outdated to me in a weird way. Like the humor and the style seem like not that old but like just on the cusp of not being in anymore like it seems like a last year feel i absolutely get this i think that going forward uh sincerity i think we're in this is weird but i think like our global global vibes right now is one of sincerity i think we value as a society sincerity more and we're like into games that really believe in themselves more and this game kind of like seems like it's jokey and it seems like oh it's definitely jokey yeah Yeah, it seems inconsistent too though because like some of the characters like super badass cool guy and then other characters are like weird like cartoony like bouncing around guy and i'm just like well which game are you what do you want from me oh man wait till you see league of legends <laughs> you gotta have goofy guys and mm-hmm. serious guys you gotta have them all no, the that's goofs. that's one of the reasons yeah. i hate i don't like i do not like the aesthetic of league of legends because it like has no consistency sure it's, it's really weird and like then someone's in like a clown nurse costume and i'm like <laughs> all right i guess nothing matters in this game yeah, I, well, I, I, I think I think the other thing too is it is extremely comparable to Overwatch. Yes, it's and, like, yeah. and the problem is, is you know when I first when I was at I was at the reveal event, you know, and, and saw that for the first time, you know, I got the impression that they were trying to go for a sort of Blizzard style in their artwork. Yeah, and then Blizzard just came along and said like, no, 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 th- this is how this is supposed to look. Right, and at the time, <laughs> Overwatch wasn't even a whisper in anyone's ears. Yeah, yeah. that was crazy. Uh, let's talk about Nier Automata. Is that how you say it this time? Automata. I uh, like... It'd be Automata. Is it Automata? It'd be do, 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 do. Automata. Uh-oh. Automobile. Automata. I like <laughs> Automata. Uh, anyway, this is the Nier sequel that was shown to us uh, at... The Metal Gear Rising sequel, yeah. Shoot, actually, was it TGS or E3? I can't remember when this E3. was announced. E3. It was it E3 yeah, yeah. for sure during their Square Enix's press conference. Yeah. So yeah, it was announced then. Had no title until this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a debut trailer. Uh, we learned, I think, semi recently that uh, not not just that Platinum Games is developing, but it's actually the Bayonetta team working on this game. And this week we saw this game in action for the first time, and it definitely looks like the Bayonetta mm-hmm. team. Yeah. Uh, so that was cool. I wish this was in the press conference. I didn't know. I don't know why it wasn't. I think this is one of like Sony's exclusives. Like, yeah, you got another one. Why don't you put that in your press conference? But uh, yeah, it came out of the day later and just looked stunning. Yeah, they were probably like, ah, oh, no one cares about Nier. Really? I know. I think Brad. I think that's what I mean, it that's is. That's probably what it was. So here's this weird thing: is yeah, people Nier isn't a big name, but this seems like a semi big budget game. Yeah. Can you explain to us why this is happening? I don't even know why this game exists. Uh-huh. It's no, so cool. No idea. Yeah. That's really cool. I've never played Nier, but I hear great things about it. And it's a really like really dedicated fan base. Like Ben Moore loves that game. Yeah. I'm I'm okay on it. And but it's like real. I'm so happy this game exists. It's so cool that they're willing to make that game. Brad, I think you hit something really nice there because it seems like a trend over the last few years of AAA game development is no risks. Uh, we're trying to make the safest games possible, mm-hmm. and games that aren't safe just get canceled. And so I think it is nice to see things yeah. like this get made in this te- in this area. Well, and it's also here's the thing: is it's not just that it's a new IP or anything. It's this is an IP that essentially you know just it it just kind of went under current. You know, it's you like, can it's, say it it's, failed. Yeah, it's 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 got the cult following, but it, I'm sure the sales didn't really justify mm-hmm. the budget to make that game. Yeah. Um, and, but somebody there is still like, yeah, let's let's keep this thing going. I would, you know? I would love to see more studios do this kind of thing where it's like, like do like the exploitation films where you spend, you know, 50 grand or $15,000 on a movie knowing that 100 grand worth of people are going to go see it. 
Yeah, you know, it's not so like, an Uncharted Four budget. Right, it definitely make, does. You can make this it. game for a million bucks and sell and make two million bucks. You know, like do twenty of those a year f- that are like more interesting, riskier ideas instead of one Call of Duty or whatever. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, differentiation. I like to see Square Enix have confidence in its studios and its fans. I like to see the, the confidence mm-hmm. in both of those things. It's an encouraging game to see. Uh, Let's talk about something slightly discouraging. Uh, Nintendo's first mobile game was announced this week. Uh, of course, Nintendo had one of its quarterly investor meetings. Had to tell everybody what's up, how, how they're doing with sales. Amiibo flying off the shelves, over 20 million sold. Uh, what's interesting is that leading into this event, we were told through rumors that Nintendo would finally reveal its first mobile game that would be released this year. The, uh, Nintendo said themselves their first mobile game will be released this year when they first announced their, their deal with DNA. It's called Mitomo. Uh, Mitomo is a social communications game uh, application. Should it even call it a game? Uh, you, you, <laughs> you use your Mies, uh, you answer questions that the game gives you, and then when you walk by friends, uh, your me will talk to your friend's Mies, and you will learn things about your friends that you may not have known before. Uh, it, this has what? been delayed out of the like year. CIA, the game. It's been <laughs> delayed out of the year. It's not coming out this year at all. It's coming out uh, in 2016 because there's, there's too much. Uh, they said it, they need more time to promote it. They said they need more time to get everything ready. They said they, it's not like the game is taking a long time to develop. No, we just need to promote it for longer. Wow. Yeah. So this is Nintendo's mobile initiative. This is what everyone wanted. This is what Pactor wanted. Here it is. It's there's Mitomo. No, there's no better promotion than admitting you're bad at promoting your product. Yeah. That's so good. So what do we think about this? Wait, hold on. Let me get this. But this is a free to play. This is essentially a street pass for your phone. Yes. Okay. It's free to play. Which but... I, which I could be way down for. Yeah. I mean, I, that, yeah. that's, don't that's, lie. A, that's a thing. I, you're gonna be into it. That's a thing I've wanted my phone to do for a long time. They're gonna give you those puzzle see, pieces. You, know, you guys are gonna freak out. Could, I mean, you think about it. You think about it, all the negative things people say about society. You know, like every the people love taking pictures of people like on their phone and then showing like, look, look at all these high school girls on their phones. Ah, yeah. Like no one's friends anymore. And like, how cool would it be to like? you know, just change up that social environment to have like 40 people that are on a bus that are all doing separate things on their phone and you just connect two of those people. You just have two people go, oh, oh, that guy over there is mm-hmm. playing that, oh, hi. And, you know, and but it's, it's like, like, what do they do? They oh, go, you're that guy. Hey. I wonder who that guy is. Like, oh, it's you and we're both playing the same game. That's funny. Hold up the phone. I'm like, yeah, we're playing the same game. That's funny. Okay. Yeah, sure. You want to do a little Tetris together? Okay, we're done. Okay, bye. And you get off the bus and just like slowly but surely. Can like, you play games together? I don't know, but it's you know what I get like that's Brandon. I really I'm, appreciate I'm assuming the that's, positivity. That's what Nintendo is hoping is that we're okay. like wow. Imagine the imagine the possibilities yeah. there. Uh, I should also mention it is free to play. You can buy things for your me. The way that you can spend money on this game is you can buy things for your me to wear and and have. Yeah. But they were, they were also talking about the uh, Nintendo accounts and uh, you know things that you would do on the mobile games could you know tie into games on your consoles in the future and that kind of thing as well. Yeah, that sounds cool. Embracing the cloud. Um, it's also fun to speculate if this is some kind of like very early uh, and just like a software version of it, but like an NX rollout where it's like, this is going to plug into that. You this know? will so definitely like, talk to NX. So, Absolutely. You know, Synergy. The, 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 uh, the PlayStation app is amazing. And so it'd just be cool to see Nintendo sure, yeah. catch up. And do yeah, I could like just that. see like, you know how people do all those, you know, those really cool drawings on yeah. Miiverse now. Just imagine if like, you know, you draw a picture in Miiverse and then you know, your Mitomo goes out on your phone. It's like, hey, look what I drew. <laughs> All right, you guys are getting me excited about Mitomo. You know what? It could have been worse. All right. <laughs> It'd be nice if Nintendo was getting uh, excited about Mitomo. <laughs> as we close this, though, I should mention that uh, Nintendo st- stock dropped like hard after mm, this because of the delay. Yeah. Because of the delay, yeah. but also because of Mitomo. Uh, there was no, a, it was uh, before. It was before Mitomo was talked about. You're right, because the meeting ended. It's really funny. The meeting ended just like that's it, and then when the Q and A started, that's when they finally started talking about Mitomo. Uh, but yeah, what I just read like in a quote from an analyst in Japan who was so disappointed there was no Mario or Zelda. You know, it's like they don't. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, okay, let's talk about. Ooh, uh, keep an eye on the time. I am. Okay, thank you, Ian. Uh, I definitely am. So we'll talk about this very quickly. But I think this is so interesting. This year in backdoor shady deals, we have a really interesting one. Uh, Vivendi is buying Ubisoft stocks. And uh, I should read this headline. Uh, Refresh us as to who Vivendi is. Vivendi is a big media company. Yes, exactly. Just a huge corporation. Used to own Activision uh, and then sold off their Activision slowly. But uh, yeah, Vivendi is like a... Just corporate. Just huge. Like creepy huge. Evil money people. Evil money huge going after Ubisoft. Uh, First, 
Earlier this month, they bought 6.2% of Ubisoft. Then they bumped it up and bought 10.4%. Uh, so right now, Vivendi owns 10.4% of Ubisoft. Uh, uh, Ubisoft is nervous. They don't want this to happen. Mm -hmm. Vivendi's like, hey, we want seats on the board of directors now. And Ubisoft is like, oh, God, no. And so <laughs> uh, they're trying to come up with defenses, like perhaps getting in new investors to lower the, um, the percentage that Vivendi has. There's insane stuff happening right mm. now. Uh, I can't go into an analysis too much because obviously I'm like a Hostile dumb idiot. Hostile takeover. But yeah, it is a like that is the word being used, and that is what they're so scared of: is this hostile takeover of Vivendi over Ubisoft? How crazy is this? It's amazing to me that that can even. I mean, like it makes sense because it's a publicly traded company, but like that that can happen is hilarious to me. Yeah. yeah. Someone could just come in and be like, "I own you now." It's insane. Hi. Yeah. It, wasn't that like uh, the Dark Knight? Is that how that ended? He like ah, I have the stock. Oh yeah. Win Enterprises. I'm my oh, own yeah. boss. Oh yeah. That's I, yeah. I bought the majority. S the well, shareholder. Room. Yeah. In this case, it's like Vivendi. Like poor <laughs> Eve Skiomo is just like he's doing these interviews. He's like, I don't want this to happen. <laughs> I like that's not. Uh, we don't. We're not cool with this. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll move on though. That's just. I F think. This, Templars, man. I think this is actually <laughs> the most. <laughs> Taking over. They're doing what they want. Let's move on to, well, you're the one who started this conversation. Uh, let's go with the faster one. Um, this is from Gigo Pepo. Hi, guys. I'm from Brazil. I'm from Brazil and always watch the shows, even if the subject is about something like price drops and stuff that really doesn't mean anything for us here outside of the U.S. Thank you for watching. So I started thinking about how much the games, music, and movie industries are trying to make their products global. Thinking about here, uh, thinking here about China opening the market for console games and a lot of AAA movies, nodding to their audience as well as other markets outside of Europe uh, and Japan. And that makes me wonder if you guys stop to think about the outside market and fans of video games. My question is this, why is the global market so overlooked by the US gaming media when it's really clear that we are more than ever a huge part of this culture? Hope that question makes sense. You Blood can't work. just like sell a game in another country because um, we're American and yeah, we yeah, only yeah. care about ourselves. Well, in a way, we only know about ourselves, right? Like yeah. especially like you know, governments like those is very, operate very differently and exert a lot more control over things uh, and have censorship and, and and weird tax things that they do to games and and so it's yeah, it's kind of hard to speak. You know, I mean, it's almost like, you know, Bossman trying to talk about the Vivendi thing. It's like, oh, yeah. we sort of know about what's going on, but not really. It is that. It is absolutely yeah. that. I mean, and NPDs are the numbers we have. Where we almost only quarterly get global numbers. And if that, oh, I did want to talk about Microsoft not announcing numbers anymore. Right. They said, we're only talking about, like, Xbox Live subscriptions. We're not going to talk about console numbers anymore. Yikes. Are they not public? You don't want to hear these. <laughs> yeah. That was, private? That Microsoft was, is private? Yeah, that was their financial, like, Whoa. their quarterly announcement was just like, hey, I think they're public. Yeah, I they thought have, if you're public, you have to report. I thought numbers. so, too, but they're like, no, we're not. Here's our Xbox Live I mean, subscribers. We're doing very weird. good. <laughs> yeah, you could probably, yeah. Yeah, you could probably have some control over which information you want to yeah, share. Yeah, I think there's, yeah. like, reporting your bottom line and reporting yeah, very yeah. specific You don't have to get specific of it. units. Yeah. Um, shoot, I'm sorry. I wish we had more time to answer this question. I like what Blood was saying, though. Like, yeah. it is... Like, American culture is very insular, more so than maybe non-American places. Like, our news doesn't talk about other places except for when we have oil interests. <laughs> oh, you're right. And even if so, if you, like, watch BBC, it is much more international. It's yeah. not just only yeah. talking about things that are going on in England. Yeah, yeah but exactly. I mean, it's like we have some limited perspective of what's happening in Japan and what's happening in Europe, but then you get outside of that, and it just... Yeah. We Unless don't. we're bombing them, we don't know about them. <laughs> PBS is good, too. PBS News Hour. <laughs> it's a great note. It's good. Uh, we will try to always keep our international audience in mind because we love our international audience here at Game Trailers, at least. So I, th I think that's cool. Uh, thank you for your comments, and yeah, we'll try to keep that in mind always. That talking about U.S. dollars can get boring for you. Uh, let's do time for bets. Uh, Need for Speed will be released on Tuesday. This is the one with the FMV videos where people are looking at you in the camera and saying, "Hey, good ride." Uh, and also and you, has and you, and you got a, you got a drink that comes like right into the shot. It's a little you, bit of you blurry take cup. sips of soda in first oh, person. You bet. Well. Um, it's funny that they didn't wait to see if Guitar Hero Live backfired before going ahead with this idea. Well, this thing is, yeah, I mean, they both have a lot of money into them, but yeah, this is like 
they're pioneering some of the technology as well. Yeah, huh. two teams the same idea. Sometimes and Need for Speed has done way. live action like a, a ants lot. Like and Bugs so. Life. Uh, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Brand new to Guitar Hero, but Need for Speed live actions like that's classic. They've done that a lot. How long will the end credits be? Is our bet. Uh, the person to reveal first. Blood, you revealed first last week, didn't you? Yep. So it's Brandon this week. Seven minutes. Okay. Seven. I think it'll be 11 minutes and 21 seconds. Woo. Mm. Oh, me? Yep. I said six minutes. I have 8.30. Ah, oh, damn you, Blood. Okay, uh, Ian, can we get access to the vault, please? What? Can you, be- can you buzz me in? <laughs> uh, yeah, hang on. Okay, I'm trying to get access to the vault. Uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> we surely have the time for this. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, no. we're walking into the vault. Oh my god, it's on loop. Okay, we're walking into the vault. Okay, now <laughs> let me lock those in. Okay. Oh my god, are you gonna do this every time? Yep. We should do. We should walk in before we place the bets. Right. Okay, okay, lock it in. I'm okay. so confused. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a I'll weak copy lock. that other sound then and put it over in this subgroup. Great. Uh, last <laughs> week's bet. Halo 5 uh, released this week. What we bet on, oh my gosh, I love this bet. Uh, first we bet on like, hey, who's gonna win Tuesday night, launch night, Overwatch or Halo 5 on Twitch mm-hmm. at 7 p.m. The bet in this particular was, how many views will Halo 5 have? Okay, so here's what happened. Uh, Halo 5 got destroyed by Overwatch. At 7 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, Halo 5 Guardians had 20,341 viewers. Uh, Overwatch had 105. 1,958. So one, that's a... Five to one. Quite a bit. Yeah, 500% victory. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's what that was. So uh, I was in last place. I was 131,000 off. Uh, Jones, Blair, for you, was 115,659 off. Blood, you were 19,659 off. The super seat, and Davis nailed this. He was Killed on, it. He was only 341 off. Wow. Whoa. He bet 20,000, and the answer was 20,341. Wow. <laughs> How insane was yeah, that? Yeah, that's crazy. He that's crushed good. it. He knew. Uh, so now the Super Seat has, and this is a big deal, Super Seat has reached Bloodworth. Oof. It is Whee! now a tie. 14-14. Awesome. Jones, you have Less six. Less than half. Of <laughs> <laughs> that. It's just an, it's amazing, though, right? That like they're Nine, always ten. neck and neck. It's like a collective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still trying to take you down, blood. <laughs> uh, so, Brad, what you win? Uh, you win a, a handful of things. First, you win the right and responsibility to tell everyone what your Twitter handle is. Then, uh, you uh, should invite everyone to watch any video on game trailers. Uh, then, you get the final word. If you disagree with anything that was said throughout this entire episode, you get to say um, the final word on that subject. I'm no Heber. I'm pretty mellow about it. Okay, but you still have to say something, <laughs> and then please give us your trademark sign-off. Okay, sure. You can follow me on Twitter at BradleyLS87. I want to promote Huber Hype. He's talking about monsters. Really fun episode. Okay. This week's or next week's? The Is one that's up there week? right now. The one that's up there yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking what, about. Did you just really like that episode? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. I it's love not, monsters, too. It has nothing to do with the end of it, right? No. Okay. God, God no. no. Okay. God no. <laughs> Great. Uh, what was the other thing? Like your final that. word. If oh. you disagree with anything I said today, what is the final word you want to say about it? Hmm. I don't think I really disagree with anything, but I want to, with that question about talking about international markets is really interesting to me now. Okay. So I kind of want to start diving into that more. I'm Dive really in. fascinated by all that kind of stuff. Cool. So, like always, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for hanging out on Game Trailers. And as always, be excellent to each other. I love... What's that? <laughs> <laughs>